Today's story is called Fossils, Tell of Long Ago. It's by Aliki, and it is a nonfiction book from science. It's a level two. Let's read and find out. I got this from a little free library, and I will be returning it to a little free library pretty soon. So let's find out a little bit about fossils. And here's our dedication for Jason, who found the fossil that inspired this book. And with thanks to Catherine Teagan, Catherine Hopi, and to William F. Simpson of the Field Museum for their help. Fossils tell of long ago. Once upon a time, a huge fish was swimming around when along came a smaller fish. The big fish was so hungry it swallowed the other fish whole. The big fish died and sank to the bottom of the sea. This happened 90 million years ago. How do we know? We know because the fish turned to stone, the fish became a fossil. A plant or animal that has turned to stone is called a fossil. Scientists can tell how old stones are. They can tell how old the fish fossil was. You see it? You can see the other fish inside of it. I think. Nobody knows why it died. Wow, that's some catch. The little fossil is bigger than me. You can see the little fossil inside of the big fossil. How did the fish become a fossil? Most animals and plants do not become fossils when they die. Some rot, like P.U. rot. Others dry up, crumble, and blow away. No trace of them is left. This could have happened to the big fish. We would never know it had lived. Instead, the fish became a fossil, and this is how it happened. When the big fish died, it sank into the mud at the bottom of the sea. Slowly, the soft parts of the fish rotted away. Only its hard bones were left. The bones of the fish it had eaten were left, too. The skeleton of the fish lay buried and protected in the mud. Thousands of years went by. More layers of mud covered the fish. Tons and tons of mud piled up. After a long time, the surface of the earth changed. The sea where the fish was buried dried out. The weight of the layers of mud pressed down. Slowly, the mud turned to rock. As that happened, groundwater seeped through the changing layers of mud. Minerals were dissolved in the water. The water seeped into the tiny holes in the fish bones. The minerals in the water were left behind in the fish bones. After a very long time, the bones turned to stone, and the fish was a fossil. Some fossils, like the fish, are actual parts of plants or animals that have turned to stone. Sometimes a fossil is only an imprint of the plant or animal. Millions of years ago, a leaf fell off a fern-like plant. It dropped into the swampy forest soil, which is called peat. Then the leaf was buried by more peat and was pushed into the soil. The leaf left the mark of its shape in the peat. The peat with the imprint of the leaf hardened. It became a fossil, it became a rock called coal. Coal is a fossil also. You can see it on their table. And then the people are talking. Um, little boy says, peat is made up of mushy, rotted leaves. And then the little girl said, we use peat in the garden to make plants grow. Another boy said, look how perfect the leaf looks. Um, lots of other things have been found in coal, even dinosaurs, the other two girls said. And then the, this girl and boy are saying, the shell was buried whole, but when scientists split the rock, the shell crumbled away, and this is only its imprint. And then here's the other half. I found both halves of that fossil. These are dinosaur tracks. They were made in fresh mud 125 million years ago. Sand filled the dinosaur's footprints in the mud. The sand hardened into a rock called sandstone. Millions of years later, fossil hunters dug through the rock. They found the fossil tracks exact imprints of the dinosaur's foot. It's an iguanodon. These footprints can help us tell us a lot about iguanodon. Scientists get clues about how big it was and how fast it moved and that it ran on two legs by looking at the fossils. Not all fossils are found in stone. Some are found in the frozen ground of the Arctic. This ancient mammoth was a kind of elephant. It froze to death thousands of years ago. The grass it had been eating was still in its mouth. The famous mammoth found accidentally in 1901 in Siberia. 
part of it was showing through the melted ice. Scientists found pounds of grass and moss in its stomach. The mammoth was fresh enough for wolves to eat. Ooh, I wouldn't dare. So it froze, and when it thawed, all that time later, wolves started eating it because the meat was still fresh. Millions of years ago, a fly was caught in the sticky resin of a tree. The resin hardened and became a fossil called amber. Amber looks like yellow glass. The fly is perfectly preserved in the amber. Other insects have been preserved in amber, too. Um, things like necklaces are sometimes made out of them. This little girl says, my mother has an amber necklace. Here's a fly in this one and a spider, ants, a cockroach, because they all got stuck in that sticky resin. Um, we've learned many things from the fish, the fern, the fly, and the dinosaur tracks. Fossils tell us about past. Fossils tell us there were once forests where now there are deserts. Forests tell us there were once seas where there's now mountains. So you can see the difference in those pictures. This was 215 million years ago and today, those two pictures. And the kids say, fossils of these plants and animals were found in that desert. That's the painted desert and the petrified forest. Some people have visited there. Petrified means turned to stone. So it's like a fossil forest on this side. Um, and then over here, these fossils of sea creatures were found on mountains. The earth has changed a lot since then. So we find things in different places. There's coral and other fossils. Many lands that are cold today were once warm. We find fossils of tropical plants in very cold places. Fossils tell us about strange creatures that lived on Earth long ago. No such creatures are alive today. They have all died out, but they have left behind some surprising descendants, birds. So birds are descendants of the dinosaurs. Um, dinosaur bones like the Stegosaurus and the Ichthyosaur. Um, there's a Pteranodon that was a flying one. You can see them in museums. I saw an ichthyosaur fossil in Nevada. It's the state fossil. It's the state something for Nevada, and they have one in one of the museums there. Some fossils are found by scientists who dig for them, and they say things like, look, there's fish at eight, too, like the one we saw earlier. And they say nothing ever happens in Kansas. So these are fossils found in Kansas. Um, some fossils are found by accident. You too might find a fossil if you look hard. When you see a stone, look at it carefully. It may be a fossil of something that once lived. So these kids are looking at things. Um, I found a fossil at the seashore. Um, it says you can find fossils in the woods too, or where they dug a new road, or on a mountain. Uh, we saw fossils in the marble walls of a big building because marble is polished limestone where many fossils have been found. And some kids are sad because they haven't found a fossil yet. So if you haven't found one yet and you want to, don't worry, you might still. How would you like to make a fossil? Not a one million year old fossil, but a one minute old fossil. You can make a clay imprint of your hand. So first you take some clay and then you flatten it out and you press your hand into the clay and then you lift your hand away. The imprint shows what your hand is like. Um, the way a dinosaur track shows us how its foot was like. And then you have a footprint and you have a fossil. Sometimes you do those crafts at home or at school where you make hands or feet uh, fossils out of clay or sometimes plaster of Paris. Suppose when it dried out, you buried your clay imprint. Suppose a million years from now, someone found it. Your imprint would be as hard as stone. It would be a fossil of your hand. It would tell the finder something about you. It would tell something about life on earth a million years ago or like earlier. So you could bury your fossil and someone would know all about me, how big you were, how many fingers you had. Um, they could learn about you from your fossil. Every time someone finds a fossil, we learn more about life on earth long ago. Someday you might find a fossil, one that's millions and millions of year old, years old. You may discover something no one knows. I wonder what people will look like a million years from now.